Now, we all know Power is coming up to his 10-year anniversary which falls on June the 7th, which is also when we're going to see the beginning of Season 4 Part 1. But it also means we're coming up to 10 years of seeing Michael Rainey Jr. playing Tariq St. Patrick. And over the years, there's definitely been moments where we've all thought, you know what, fuck Tariq. He's an annoying spoiled little brat that should have just done what his father told him to. He had the brains, all the advantages, connections and resources that his father didn't. But I think Rudy P hit the nail on the head as he always does, where he said the following, We've come a long way from don't nobody want to see a Tariq spin-off to what the fuck they cancelling goes for, kind of wild to see in real time. And it is crazy. Tariq St. Patrick has managed to change a lot of minds over the years, not everyone's, but he definitely has changed the majority. And now that we're approaching a decade of Michael Rainey Jr. playing Tariq St. Patrick, is it the right time to end his story, or are we just getting started? That's the agenda for today's breakdown. We're going to be running through his relationships with Brayden. We're going to take a deeper look at a couple of scenes from the teaser, his relationship with Monet and the Tohardas, Elisa Marie potentially coming back for revenge, will he get his inheritance back and last but not least, will Tariq St. Patrick survive and come face to face with a ghost from his past, come the end of Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4. So you really did kill your father? You may not be here no more but ghosts never die. Now, one of the stronger relationships across Ghost has been Tariq and Brayden's brotherhood. We've seen what normally happens with brothers. We've seen them fight, argue, have disagreements. But for majority of Ghost, Tariq and Brayden have held it down and been there for each other. More so with Brayden actually holding it down for Tariq. We saw him take the rap in court, helping him make extra cash when he knew Tariq was short, or just like when he came in clutch right at the end of season 4. But things are about to change. Season 4 will find Tariq St. Patrick and Brayden Weston against the world, as they form new alliances and find their way back into the street game. But when Brayden starts flirting with a reckless new lifestyle, Tariq will begin to wonder if there's room for two at the top. So there's actually two talking points to take from this bit of synopsis. There's a new alliance and Brayden flirting with a new reckless lifestyle. Now in regards to the new alliance, we all know they have their back against the wall at this moment in time. They have no product, lack of funds, no connect and now they're in a war against Nomar, the Tohardas and Effie. However, they do have an inside man in Obi. The green guard. My family received approval. Yeah, I don't know. This is why Obi helped Tariq by giving Brayden the heads up that they were about to clip his boy in the warehouse. So Obi will have his family from Nigeria coming over. And I do wonder if this is a new alliance that could be with Obi's family. We have to assume that Noma will find out about Obi's betrayal. And when she does, I do think she is going to get rid of him, which creates this opportunity for Kane to harder. However, getting rid of Obi would only give Obi's family even more fuel to kind of avenge his death aligning their interests with Tariq St. Patrick's and Brayden's. So I do think this little detail can't go unnoticed. This new alliance that they've teased in the synopsis could potentially be Obi's family or maybe even Mahoney. There's a man named Mahoney trying to move into my territory. I want him gone, but more than that, I want his fucking money. All of it. We've all had the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And Mahoney could potentially be another alliance, which is where I do want to bring it to something Gianni mentioned in the Crew Has It podcast. We have a character in season four next season who is probably the most unpredictable person michael and i have worked with mm -hmm. and this unpredictable in what way just he was crazy so they work with someone crazy in season four and now that we've got a bit of insight into this new season it could very well be the head of this new alliance but either way whoever it is whether it's obi's family from nigeria mahoney who was mentioned by mecca or someone else we know and they know that they need some muscle around them they need a network of people that they can trust and rely on and they need to start rebuilding quick because I'm sure no more in the Tohardas will be able to smell blood. I don't know, man. All I can say is I'm tired of being on fucking defense. I hate, we need to get on offense for once. This is something Tariq said in season three. He was tired of playing defense and looking at the teaser that they posted and where they gave us the announcement that they'd begun filming for season four. It does seem like Tariq and Brayden are going to be on demon time from the get go. They're dressed in all black, very similar to the way Tariq is dressed in this scene from the teaser. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was from episode one with Tariq and Brayden going on the offensive to catch No More and the Tohardas off guard. One of the 48 laws of power which I don't think we've ever spoken about on this channel is Law 17. Keep others in suspense. Cultivate an air of unpredictability. So what does it mean by keep others in suspense and create an air of unpredictability? People love routine and a sense of control because then they have balance and then they know where they stand. But if you do the unpredictable, you can actually throw off your enemies. So in essence, if Tariq and Brayden suddenly go on the offensive from a position of weakness, they can actually start to create fear and confusion, which would definitely make Nomar and the Tohardas take notice and think, wait, what the fuck? So going on the offensive can unbalance Nomar and the Tohardas, which in turn 
would give Tariq and Brayden some breathing space while potentially forcing a mistake from their enemies. So looking at the 48 laws of power, when you're outgunned, try and be unpredictable, which I do think they are gonna be, but it also means attacking on all fronts, including loved ones. As Noma fights to establish her business in the States, she also tries to keep a close eye on her bratty daughter, Anya, who is now on Tariq and Brayden's radar. So when we talk about going on the offensive, bullets and bodies isn't the only way you can attack and weaken your opponent. As we all know from power, getting close to your enemy's loved ones can also be equally as effective. So in season 4, we are going to see Tariq and Brayden targeting Anya Covington, because that's one way you can hurt Noma, and by the sounds of it, she seems like she is a bit of a rebel, someone who's exactly not used to being told what to do, so Nomar will definitely have her hands full. Now one thing which is worth noting is that Anya's father was deleted by Nomar's muscle out in Milan, and Tariq and Brayden know that, so whether they use that information to kind of turn her against her mother, who knows, but Anya Covington is going to be one of their game plans. Now game plan strategies, chess moves and being on the offensive is all good, when you and your partner in crime are on the same page, but what happens if you're not? This is going to be the reality of the situation between Tariq and Brayden at some point in season 4. At some point Brayden will start flirting with a new lifestyle, which will make Tariq wonder if there is room for both him and Brayden at the top of the food chain. So this can only be a couple of things. Either Brayden might be making some reckless moves such as hitting licks behind Tariq's back, like he's done before with Kane. Maybe Brayden's become bloodthirsty and trigger happy, which is kind of putting a lot more heat on them. Or what I think is most likely, Brayden going off the rails and getting high on his own supply because he can't take the pressures of the street game and the consequences that come with it. We have to remember that even though Brayden has started to embrace the darker side of the street game a lot more, he's come from a privileged background where he's been sheltered from the real harsh consequences of the street life. We can also argue Tariq grew up in a penthouse suite in Tribeca rather than Queens, but look at who Tariq's family is, look at what they've done, look at what Tariq's done back in power, just have a look at who he's lost, what he's been through, the pain that he's been through and the pain that he's caused. He set up his best friend back in season 5, lost his twin sister Reina because of stupidity of his own, got rid of his father, Ray Ray, Jabari and those are just to name a few. Like he said back in season 1, it always comes down to him, his family and a gun. But with Brayden, imagine a situation where he starts to lose his family members to the street game, Trace, Rebecca or his parents fall victim because of his actions. What will that do to Brayden? What if Brayden has to commit murders that he doesn't want to? Because we all saw how he hesitated with the Lauren kill, or where he kind of fumbled with a Russian. What would that do to his mindset? So when we say reckless new lifestyle, at this moment in time, I'm leaning on him becoming a little reckless in terms of getting high on his own supply. Now, what this will also make Tariq question is how there basically isn't room for two at the top, and he's right, there isn't. But what is Tariq willing to do to protect his future? You're in a way. You're in the way of my future like you said he was in the way of yours. Ain't that what you said? Now, we all know what Tariq did to Ghost when he was in the way of Tariq's future. And I'm not saying Tariq will get rid of Brayden. But with it being the last and final season, honestly we can't rule out any kind of chess moves. At the end of the day, you know if it does come down to a choice between Tariq and Brayden, we all know what Tariq will do. He's gonna protect his future and the ones he loves, who are Tasha, Yasmin, Grandma Estelle. So let's see what happens, it's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds, especially with it being the last and final season of Ghost. Is it a storyline and chapter that they kind of close, or is it something that will be left open ended? Because as far as the cast and crew knew, apparently they had no idea that this was the final season. Either way, let's see when we get a bit more information. Now moving on to this scene where we see Tariq holding a gun towards a mystery person, which isn't the first time we've seen this from power. During the season 3 teaser and the official trailer, we saw Tariq pointing a gun towards someone, where he said the following. I love you, but I'll put a bullet in you to stop you from killing my mother. Now at the time we had no idea he was talking to Uncle Tommy. I am sure some would have predicted Tommy, but I'd say 90% of Power fans had no idea. But it seems like they've done it again, where there's the same air of mystery and unpredictability, if not more, because they've got this teaser in black and white to kind of make sure they don't reveal too much. I think compared to previous teasers and trailers where they've kind of spoiled a few things here and there, this time around everything is very vague, they have us questioning a few plots and storylines, but it doesn't necessarily tell us too much, which I really do believe is a great place to be going into season 4. But that's not what you guys want to hear, I'm sure you guys want to know who's on the other end of this gun, and if I were to kind of have a guess at this moment in time, I would probably say it's Monet Tahada. The reason why I think they could come face to face in this way is because Monet's going to be looking for revenge. She's going to go into season 4 thinking that Tariq was the one who was behind the failed assassination attempt and at some point, they are going to come face to face. 
I think it's going to be a bit of a cat and mouse game for half the season, but sooner or later they are going to find themselves in the same room, and then it's just a matter of what goes down, who says what, and do they kind of get down to the bottom of the truth? I think they will. Looking at the patterns and history of how this went down between Tommy, Tasha and Tariq in season 3, I think it's going to be very similar, except this time around. I think it's Monet to harder, although we can't rule out this being maybe Effie, 2 bit or someone else. Honey beans, on top of what you already owed on your tab. You don't want the keys to your ride. Nigga, what? At the end of season 3, we finally saw the return of 2 bit. He asked 400k on top of what Tariq already owed him, which was 50, plus product and weapons. But considering Tariq didn't have anything to give 2 bit at that moment in time, he took his Porsche, something we did see in the teaser for season 4. So 2 bit will definitely be back. Now with 2 bit, Tariq is gonna have to try and find a way to manage this situation. Does he try and get him on side? Does he get rid of him? Or will 2 bit continue to cause issues for Tariq by continuously asking for payments? In my opinion, Tariq does need to find a way to get him on side because he's someone who could be very useful in the streets. Let's be honest, one of Tariq's weakest points is him not being able to throw hands, as well as say someone like Kane, who is nurtured and built for the streets. So having someone like 2bit who's a real street soldier could really benefit him, and that's also another reliance we can't rule out. Let's also not forget he also holds something that belongs to Tariq, Ghost Rolex. So let's just give ourselves a quick reminder. One of the things that Tariq inherited from Ghost was his father's watch collection, and so technically, this watch does belong to Tariq. Now for those who have watched my previous breakdowns over the past year, will also know how I've mentioned how Power loves to make references to watches, and whether it plays a part in season 4 where maybe Tariq takes out 2bit, takes his watch and car back, who knows. But I do think with this being the last and final chapter, they do need to close this particular storyline. Now let's just come back to the Tahardas for a moment, because we're not done with them, and neither is Tariq. It's already been said that with season 3 being all about betrayal, season 4 will be about revenge and Tariq will have a lot of the Tahadas inside, just like he once said in season 2. Got bullets for. No matter of fact, I got bullets for the whole Tahada family when I get out. Now, all three, Drew, Kane, and Diana, have all done some fucked up shit behind his back. There's a long list for Kane, with planting Ramirez's badge being the biggest. With Drew and Diana, we all know what those two have done. So revenge will definitely be at the forefront of Tariq's mind. It's just a matter of how he makes those calculated moves, which I think he will. I think he's going to hit the Tahadas where it hurts and I really wouldn't be surprised if he was the one to take one or two of them out come the end of season 4. So let's keep our eyes on what Tariq has in store, especially for Drew and Diana. What are you doing? You're surprised? After you left the back door to your apartment open for dear old Uncle Tommy? My blood's on you too. Have you checked on Elisa Marie since you made her an orphan? Now when we talk about revenge, Elisa Marie Proctor is also someone who does spring to mind. A while ago I created a theory of how and why I think she has a bone to pick with Tariq, because let's not forget, he had a huge part to play in her father's death. We also saw Joe Proctor return in 209 in Tariq's Nightmare, where he said, have you checked upon Elisa Marie, considering you made her an orphan? So is this foreshadowing her return? Now this is where I do want to bring up the season synopsis. At the end it does tease that Tariq must reconcile his past to rise to the top of the food chain and become who he needs to be to protect the ones he loves the most. So Tariq must reconcile his past, which basically means he's got some internal conflicts or issues that he needs to address, which could be his past decisions, actions and people that he's hurt. And Elisa Marie does fall into that category, along a few others like Lauren, Ghost, etc. So I do feel like Elisa Marie Proctor is maybe just one to keep an eye on. Now speaking of the past, what happens with Tariq's inheritance? We all know to inherit the nightclubs, the money, the stocks and shares Ghost had, he had to graduate from college with an average GPA of 3.5. So we saw Tasha in a meeting with Simon Stern, and in exchange for his help in getting Tariq admitted into Stansfield, she said Tariq's trust fund would give him Club Truth after Tariq graduated. The problem is, Club Truth was never Tasha's to give. She didn't inherit a penny, Tariq did. Now throughout Ghost, Daniel Warren has popped up here and there because he was the one who was looking after Ghost's estate. However, in Season 3, Tariq did transfer his trust fund to Western Holdings after RSJ told him to do something smart with his estate. I believe in Western Holdings so much so, RSJ, that I convinced the executor of my trust to have it moved here. Which means I'll just have a bigger pot of money waiting for me when I graduate. So Tariq had a conversation with Daniel Warren and convinced him to move his trust fund over to Western Holdings. So by the time he graduates, his portfolio would have increased in value. Unfortunately, this turned out to be the complete opposite of smart because Western Holdings was a Ponzi scheme. So when Western Holdings was burned down to the ground, so was his entire trust fund. Everything he was working towards since the very beginning of Ghost Season 1 was gone. 
However, we do see Tariq standing in Club Truth in the teaser, and so it does raise the question, how did he get his hands on Club Truth? Did Ghost have any further stipulations that maybe kind of protected Club Truth? Could he have had help from RSJ, or maybe even Simon Stern? Or could it just be a hallucination? I think when it comes to this scene from this teaser, we can make a case for all of these points. Ghost could definitely have more moves up his sleeve from beyond his grave. Tariq could be dreaming, and he could finally meet his father in the exact same place he shot him, with his story coming full circle to back to kind of where it finished in power. RSJ may have some power and pull, or maybe Simon Stern has made a few phone calls and wrapped Tariq around his thumb, just like he once used to have Ghost. So that's the situation around Tariq's trust fund and his inheritance. It is going to play a role in some shape or form. But I guess the next question we have to kind of ask is, how do they end Tariq's story if this is maybe the final season of Book 2 Ghost? Are they going to kill Tariq off? Do they kind of leave us on a whodunit kind of storyline where it's open to interpretation, where there may be 5 or 6 candidates that could have killed him, who Tariq pissed off just like Ghost did? Does he make it out of the street game and finally go legit? Because let's not forget what Tariq teased in Season 1. Remember how Ghost always used to say there's only two ways drug dealers end up? Dead or in jail? Well, I think I found another way. A third way which we've still not seen, or have we? Or does he finally see his father, either as an alive character or in a hallucination scene? I personally don't believe you can end Tariq's story without him seeing his father Ghost and having a conversation with him. I think he's past the stage where he'll see Kanan because of where he is at this moment in time with his life, which is almost time to graduate in 2024. And with him standing in Club Truth, it's only fitting that he has all these memories come back to him, where he then finally sees his father Ghost. Now what's my opinion? What do I think they're gonna do? I personally think they're gonna leave us on a huge cliffhanger, maybe like a whodunit kind of storyline, or an ending where he does survive which is kind of open-ended for more story to tell. Because I think the writers and the higher ups at stars knows how much those fans still adore and love Ghost's character. They're not stupid. They would have seen and read the hundreds of Ghost Alive theories that still go until this very day. And I think that's probably the route they're gonna go down with Tariq. I'm sure they're gonna go with something that will get the internet talking for a very long time, in terms of the ending. And also an ending which isn't so much of an end, but also the start of a new chapter and a new book. We also have to remember that power is based on patterns of play. We have to kind of study what they've done in the past, and make our predictions and theories based on patterns, evidence, facts and findings. So at this moment in time, without you know seeing any further teasers or trailers, I'm probably going to say they're going to have the internet going crazy with the ending of season 4. Very similarly to how they did with Power, it's going to be a huge cliffhanger, which leaves us questioning maybe the fate of Tariq St. Patrick, did he survive, or basically the setup for the next chapter or book in the Power universe. Because Catherine Busby from Stars did tease, it's an explosive season with a fitting crescendo, and that fans will not be disappointed. Now in my opinion there's only one way to avoid disappointment, considering it is the final chapter. Give us Ghost. Give us Ghost in Tariq's hallucination scene. Of course we can't rule them out bringing him back as an alive character, because we all know what they've recently done with Lauren and Unique, so there is also that. But to avoid disappointment, they're gonna have to put on a hell of a show. But that's just my opinion at this moment in time. I personally feel they're gonna leave us on a huge cliffhanger, which basically sets up a new chapter in the Power Universe, which may or may not be centered around Tariq. They also might move him to Chicago and join Uncle Tommy, with Force becoming the main show, who knows, that also can't be ruled out. But either way, I do think we will get an announcement in the future around a new show, which essentially replaces Ghost, because I think the replacement for Raising Kanan is basically Power Origins, but for them to give us a new show after Ghost, they have to give the audience a reason to watch it. We need to be invested in that character. Will that be around Tariq with them going in a new direction? Will it be Kane or someone else? I went through how 50 is a genius when it comes to marketing and how they could actually be method to the madness. So it's just one of those where we're just gonna have to kinda wait and see and be a bit patient. Let's see what other announcements they have in store for us, which I think could potentially come between chapter 1 and chapter 2 because there is gonna be a bit of a break. But that's a breakdown of where we are with Tariq St. Patrick, his story and relationships. So drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section, let me know your thoughts and predictions going into what might be Tariq's last and final chapter. Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.